So we're going to start in about two minutes. Um, is the microphone coming through clearly? Okay, so it is 1.30. Is the microphone clear? You can just let me know in the chat. Okay, cool. So um, welcome, everyone. Uh, so uh, thanks for coming to the event. So this is uh, OSIS Arcade. So this is the second time we've done it uh, as an online stream so uh thank you for joining thank you for taking the time out of your day to um, check out these projects um, and support our students so uh, my name is juno moro i'm an assistant professor of game design at osos community college so we have a two-year aas degree program in game design so it's kind of unique it's the only uh, degree program of its kind in cuny so it's the only public degree program in games uh, uh, in the city university of new york so, uh, you know, we have students come in from all over to take this uh, to your program and uh, they learn game design, game development and how to make games. And so as part of that, they have to le learn all of these different skills. So um, a lot of our students come in um, without any experience making games. They may have played games as consumers. And so it's their introduction to actually making things. So they have to learn, um, they have to learn all about game design. They have to learn about how to make um, assets, um, art, visual design, um, code, uh, sound design. There's a lot of stuff that they have to learn. So it's very uh, comprehensive. And so uh, making games is really hard is what um, a lot of people discover in this process. And it's also been really challenging for a lot of students because we've had online um, instruction for over a year now, so almost a year and a half. Um, and a lot of our students don't have, like some of our students don't have a desk or don't have Wi-Fi at home. And yet they were able to come through, make it this far, get through this program and finally take this capstone, um, this capstone course called Game Studio. Um, so in this class, they had to spend the majority of the semester working on one project. So they started off by pitching that project to their peers. So they had uh, brief presentations um, where they had a concept for a game based on some constraints. And then they had to uh, 
like basically vote and elect which projects would move forward from those uh, pitches. And so these are the final four that came out of that process. So yeah, that's, um, that's how it went. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we have four projects today and the first project and all of the developers are in the chat. If you want to ask any questions or anything like that, they are uh, ready to answer your questions. So the first project we have is called Baker Stand. So uh, this is a project um, made by uh, Tino Mendez, Zach Claudio, uh, and Oscar Martinez. So here we go. All right. Hey guys, my name is Tino and I am the designer for Baker Stand. I worked on constructing the rules for the game. This includes developing the items, enemies, and goal for the game, uh, as well as helping in the other roles such as the art and code. We've been working on this game for a couple past few months and we're definitely excited to show you guys what we have in store for you today. One of the reasons why we chose to work on this particular project was because the original concept that was pitched to us was very intriguing. The lore, the story of the game involving bread, the baker, fans was very absurd. So I definitely leaned into that idea since it was pretty much out of nowhere and it was a pretty weird theme to create a game on. But about Baker Stand, Baker Stand is a single player game where the player takes control of the baker and that baker must make it through the city and go home in one piece or else the fans will try to tear the baker apart and send the baker all the way back to the start. So that's the goal and the game has multiple items that the player is able to utilize throughout the game for their journey. And it also has good music for you to keep you on your toes and features stylish art that was made by our artists on our team. Originally, we intended for the game to be a 2D top-down turn-based game where the player would move first and the enemy would move at the same time where the player would. So if the player would move one space the enemy moves one space as well both at the same time so what this means is whenever they interact with each other they would have to bring up a problem like maybe pick up a sword or uh, use an item to you know defend themselves against the enemy that's what we originally planned it for but with the engine that we chose we decided to go for a good dough which was a game engine and we decided, alright, let's go, let's do this, right? We decided to program the movement first. We wanted to figure out how do we utilize the movement in a turn-based game. So what it would be is each tile would be pressed once. So the movement, you press up once, you only move one space up. You can't just like hold the up button and you presumably just walk forward like any other game. But that was a slightly big issue with the movement we struggled on it for quite some time as well as for the enemy but the problem for that one would be that the engine is kind of new for us and it's kind of new for everyone else we decided to look up for guides we tried to read through the manuals and we kind of were stuck like a lot <laughs> We were really troubled with the amount of code that was given to us, especially in such a short time that we had to deliver a game. So we decided, hey, we should just drop the turn-based movement game and instead focus on just a movable uh, top-down game where the player can move freely and the enemy will chase the player. But we decided to stick with Godot instead of moving on to a different engine. Everything was going fine and well up until the programming for the AI messes up really bad. 
the enemy would run away from the baker or the enemy would stand still the collisions between everything was a huge mess and yeah that's that's where we dropped the original turn-based game for baker stand instead we moved on to something else rather than just sticking on to godot which i'm glad we did we made excellent progress moving away from godot uh, I also wanted to say thank you for everyone who came out here today to watch the Baker Stand presentation. All my friends that have joined here for the presentation. Um, I just want to say a huge, huge shout out to you guys. You guys have been supporting me throughout these past few months. I am very excited to show you guys the game that our team made. Um, I hope you guys have fun with the game as much as we had. When we play tested it, we fixed the game, all that. I really do hope to hear some feedback from you guys, whether it's positive, negative. I'm just glad to see the game being finished. Next time, I'll make the game even more better, just for you guys. Hey everyone, this is Zachary Claudio, the artist of the team behind Baker Stand, and yes, we stand baking. As the artist, of course, my duty was to create the visuals of the game. Examples are this, 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 and this. I even did the art of the UI, like the title screen button, the bread sword, and my most favorite of them all, the turtle bread. Believe it or not, I thought I wasn't up to the job. But after a bit of self-motivation, I managed to create the things you'll see in the game. They aren't professional level art, but I promise you that a lot of effort was put into this. Besides scribbling on drawing programs, I had to do my fair share of coding. My side of the coding was to make sure the player was able to collide with the wall, meaning that the player wasn't able to go through the wall, move the player sprite in general, get to the game by pressing the let's play button make sure that the player was able to get to the victory screen pro properly make sure the player was able to utilize the heart system which failed but we found an alternative I also made sure to help my teammates by providing proper and recent tutorials our history of the game the middle section of it so our game designer must have told you about us using Godot for Baker Stand. Turns out, Godot wasn't the best engine for us to use. Well, let me explain. It wasn't that the engine wasn't good for us, it was pretty much the lack of tutorials and people to help us, something that we desperately needed. See, our game needed three things. A bread sword slash weapon and the code to get rid of the enemies, the turtle bread, shield and the angelic bread restored lost health the one issue that went on with this was that the ai was running away and when we asked for help there was no answer no one gave us any answers at all unfortunately we couldn't get help from anyone that we knew because we were using a rather obtuse engine even our professor couldn't help us with it we needed to find a way to complete this before the alpha which was a week away our last build of baker stand using Godot was a very stripped down version of what we wanted it to be. Instead of an isometric game, we turned it to a bullet shooter. When we presented this game to our professor, she said that the game looked a bit generic. Those words alone worried us, and right after the presentation we had to make a decision. Either we continue using Godot and struggle, or we can migrate our assets and get all the help that we needed while crunching a few days for the alpha. We chose to migrate to Unity because of the abundance of tutorials that we can find and the massive support that we potentially have for our, from our teammates and professors. Because we had a crunch, some things had to be reconsidered. A few examples would be the isometric view of the game. We kind of found that a bit impossible with the amount of time that we have left to turn based combat because we couldn't find any good tutorials to help us with that and animations for the baker because we had a crunch. But after all those compromises, we created something that we considered a masterpiece. You must be wondering, why didn't we go with Unity to begin with? 
The reason for that is primarily because of the previous experience with Unity. We used the input system that Unity just implemented and trust me, it was hard to find proper tutorials that combated the issue. For me, I had to dig through Discord community service to even get simple answers for me to get everything in. Immaturely, we picked a good dough to get away from Unity, but in reality, we needed to use it to keep up with the other teams and make it to our end goal. If I were to reflect on my time working on the game, I would say that if this was the only thing I had to do during this semester, I would think my art would have been better. I also enjoyed working with my teammates that reassured me that everything is going well and there's nothing to worry about. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this presentation. Also, I made this. Think, Baker. Think. Hello, everybody. This is Oscar Martinez. I am the programmer that worked alongside Zachary and Faustino in making the game Baker Stand. For the outfit presentation, our game was simplistic. All you had to do was dodge the enemies, pick up collectibles, and survive for the duration of the round. After the outfit presentation, we decided that this game was very generic and so common that we needed to make a shift before the beta release came. So for the next two weeks, we decided to make a vertical scroller point A to point B game in which you as the player will dodge fans along the way to point B and you'd win once you reach point B. Simple, but it's a vertical scroller and this was very unique to us and therefore we decided to go this way. So for the first week, we had to implement all the design for the game again. Uh, we had to delete the way uh, our canvas was, and we did had had to make we had to make uh, vertical walls, so that we had a vertical layout all set up. We also had to re-implement the uh, the sprite designs into into the build. We had to re we had to reintegrate them in positions that we needed them to be at. Then we had to um, then we had to redesign the um, the arts the artwork and art styles that we had. Uh, during the end of the first week, however, we um, we had to begin the coding aspect of the game. We had to we had to add the coding uh, uh, coding triggers for the house, the AI movement, the player movement, the collectible item scripts, um, the the wall script, and the on trigger enter colliders. Uh, once once me and Faustino handled that work with the help of Zach uh, Zach and his um resources and getting tutorials for us. The first week was over and then we reached our milestone. We had the beginnings of the beta. It was working the way we intended, with some ifs between the scripts. So for the second week, uh, Zachary, Zachary handled the um, the art style for the game, while me and Faustino handled um, a great majority of the game's design as well as the scripts. We decided uh, once um, we had the majority of the uh, AI movement the way we wanted to work with the scripts, the item scripts were now working perfect in perfect condition. You could pick them up and everything, and then you could click your mouse button to use the item of, of, of choice that you could use. We also had a victory entry, so we actually had a win objective now. Once that was done, we decided to implement sound. Uh, put in some music in myself. We had to implement some of the uh, codings for the sound effects, play on a way co uh, code, um, we also had a. We also decided to put uh, scene scene loadings into the game uh, during the during the second week or second half of the week of of our before the beta presentation. So by the by the end of the second week, we three successfully implemented a title screen, the main game scene, the victory screen, and the game over scene with function buttons that lead to to playing again. And to exit in the game without having to do extra extra um, alt tab work. We are uh, we've also implemented sound effect coding so that you'd have sound when you triggered a, a button press for the item that you pick up. We've now reached to the point where our game is finally functioned to the way we want for the beta presentation. We could not have gotten to this point without us three uh, communicating greatly, especially especially with this um shift from the alpha presentation and then we had to recatch up from the shift from godot engine to the unity engine because godot was going to be limited the the road the road from the beginning to the alpha 
was already a rocky road, but we've made it there. And now the road from the alpha to the beta and shifting everything to this point was also a, a, a experience that we expect to deal with in the future, but we dealt with now because this was very, because our game was very generic and we did not want this to be a generic game. And we thought the vertical scroller would be a more unique aspect of the game. Our beta is almost there. We're almost done. This is Oscar Martinez, the programmer for the for the group that worked on Baker Stand. I'm out. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, that was uh, Baker Stand. So uh, give them a round of applause in the chat. Um, so yes, we stand baking. So. Uh, that was our first project. And the next project we have uh, coming up is called Grandma with the Banana. So this one's very interesting. Um, and uh, this project is by Linda Adorno, uh, Manuel Hernandez, and uh, Nicholas Hicks. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to them. So my name is Linda. I am the artist behind Grandma with the Banana, and I've been mainly doing the art, like the background art, the character sprites, mostly that. And my, and I'm the one who generally came up with the idea of Grandma with the Banana, so my thought process slash inspiration was, I wanted to base the game around Happy Wheels, because that's where I was pulling my most of my inspiration from, and the main concept that I decided to stick with was the chaotic of the game of Happy Wheels, because I wanted to like take the chaoticness, but add some character, like actual like characters you get to like interact with into the game, so I was like, okay, how can I put this in a character? And then I thought, well, it'll be interesting. So I thought for a minute, I'm like, oh, it must be. I was thinking maybe um, a grandmother who is in a banana suit chucking bananas at people and harassing them. And I decided, like, oh, that's, I actually like the idea. I just want to, let's go with it. When I was given the, um, the direction of, like, starting to do the art and thinking, where, where can I, like, work? Because I didn't have Adobe and I didn't have, like, any other programs to draw, like, the characters in the background. So I thought, there's this program that the professors introduced us, which is Piscal, or Pixel, however you pronounce it, and um, it's all about pixel art, and I thought, I like pixel art a lot, so why not, like, dip my toes into that since I'm already familiar with it, and since, like, since pixel art is, like, somewhat limited, it'll be very fun to, like, sell the chaotic vibe on the grandmother. So the concept of the process, process of the art was make the, because I'm not familiar with pixel art, so I tried to, like, make everything recognizable as much as I can. You see the houses, bookstores, and a hospital. Like, I didn't, I didn't go crazy or experimental with the art, because I wanted the player to recognize the locations, the characters, and have the split decision of, like, oh, this is a threat, or this is not. I didn't want to, like, I just wanted the grandmother to take the stage and have them interact with the world, and that being, like, the world and the mechanics being, like, the main focus thing rather than the art. I wanted them, the characters or the players to like recognize danger or not when they see it. Hey everyone, my name is Nicholas Six and I'm the lead coder for this game. Um, I just wanted to mention first that I started with a slight interest in coding and after working on this game, I think it's something that I want to improve on a lot more. It's a really fun skill to have and the thing that, and it's the thing that brings the game to life. So. It's just amazing. It's a, it's a really amazing skill. Um, I'll be going over some things I did as I was coding, some hardships and like what I had fun about it, about coding and what I'm most proud of. So starting with coding, making code for all the script was pretty easy at the beginning of the game until it started to get more difficult as the game was developing over time. This is because you start very simple with like maybe one or two lines of code, right? And then when the game over time has been more and more complete, uh, one would start to fix things like bugs, small issues, or even making small changes. Uh, I have, I actually have like, really high respect for anyone that does coding and for those AAA games especially 
that have a lot of bugs in them that the community barks at but i think the community should be praising them instead of bringing them negativity because coding is not easy it really isn't easy at all um moving on to some hardships so some difficulties i encountered when it came to coding was the fact that I've got done implementing a feature. It either came with bugs that affected something else or it wouldn't work. And those were like really the hardest part when it came to coding. However, with the help of our professor and some guys online, I was able to get past some of these issues and getting through these challenges only makes us better. So I think the more I encounter issues like those, the more I'll be better at coding, which is something that I actually want to improve on now. Um, now, I think the fun part of coding is, um, I think the main part of coding is having a code complete like having an actual script completed so it's just amazing to think that with just a few lines of typing for a script could bring up so many possibilities like i had a lot of fun when it came to finishing code and getting work done because like i said it, it just brings everything together like the art design like features like coding is really essential part of making any game when it comes to digital games at least um finally i think i'm gonna talk about what i'm most proud of and honestly there's many features that i'm proud of but specifically i'll talk about structure damage so you'll notice that uh you notice that when hitting this building a health bar comes up meaning it's not fully destroyed that also means that you have to keep hitting it in order to fully destroy it and when it's fully destroyed you get the additional points for having a de completely destroyed building um trying to get this to work took the longest time out of everything and i'm glad that i was able to come up with a way of making it work as well as having a lot of help from the professor on getting building structures to work it's a really neat feature and I enjoyed working on this a lot, which is what I'm most proud of. But I am proud of everything else as well. So I think that is all for now. Um, have a wonderful day and enjoy throwing bananas at people. Bye bye. Hello everybody, my name is Noel Fernandez. I'm one of the members that worked on Grandma with a Banana. Um, I'm going to be mainly talking about the time management that we went through and then my role in the process of this. Um, regarding our time management, we had always tried to make sure we met at least twice a week. You know, we wanted to make sure that we always came together and then try to make sure each of, each one of us were on task with what we were doing. Um, we'd always like have good discussions about what to do next, um, what have we done so far, and, you know, what it is that we're maybe missing, um, maybe something we can improve, especially, and you know, you know, you know what's next. You know, how can we make this better? How can we get this working? Right? What can we do to either, you know, add some flair to this, or like, you know, try to what section? of our game we're still missing for it to be fully like good and i think that the fact that we met like twice a week really helped and like really we're on task with each other and always doing what we had to do like when we had to do it and i think it really went well with that entire process um regarding my role i was i mainly worked on the sound of the game um and when it came to the sound we 
specifically because our game is is um in a pixel is pixel pixel art. <laughs> Sorry. We had to we wanted to also make sure that the sound specifically the sound effects on boops and beeps were more of a bit of like a, a, a retro bit style sound to really like mesh well even like an old like arcadey retro feel to go with like the arcadey <laughs> retro gameplay like art design the program i used to make the sounds is called vfxr um and i said i say like for that we really I, I did my best in that and i think it was a very good effort on all our parts um, the sound effects, I think, were very fun to work on, and I really enjoyed it. I think I, I did really good, and I'm glad like, my teammates, like, and also, like, really piped it up and, like, really appreciated everything. And I'm just glad that the sound effects, specifically the sound effects, were, were done in a way that, like, I imagined them well. And, I, uh, yeah. Um... Including the sound, I had also worked on the, the music for the game. Um, now, this was a very difficult task for me personally, because I am not the most uh, musically adept person ever. And it was very hard for me to first find a, um, a suitable, like, I'm going to say engine, the best way to, like, way to, to make music, because I, as I'm not a musician, I don't have anything... To, to be able to play music so the first main hurdle to the to jump over was finding something i could use to you know make music and, and luckily we had we were able to find a um a website that basically is like a sheet music thing it's called bebops.com and I, I highly recommend anyone who's ever going to make music to, to try it out it's free it's essentially like if you are a musician it's a good way to like play out your your sheets you know, your, you know write, write your notes down or if you're not you can or or, or just play out music as well because there's a lot of like instruments you can use a lot of different um uh, you do it in different like keys you can change the tempo you add some reverb you can customize it a lot and it's very helpful in that in the very fact that someone like me is very musically inept could even make a song or two that you know sounds like a song that my teammates enjoyed it was, was actually really cool now about the songs themselves um i had made two specifically and i like had two different um mindsets for them for the first song it's the um the menu music when you first start the game and what it is about and how to play the game um for that i i myself wanted to make it so like it was sort of a calm before the storm because our game is very so it is, it is meant to be very sort of a chaotic you know you have to run running from all the cops and trying to avoid getting hit while also like destroying everything in your path so before that i wanted to make it a calm before the storm so it's like you know you're sort of prepping up before you start to wreak havoc and truly destroy everything and and for the the main theme of course i wanted it to be a lot more hectic you know more 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 energetic more into the whole idea of, of what we're doing and i wanted to be so you know that it's a very chaotic situation i think and i you know, once again as a musically in that person i think i did the best of my ability and my teammates and also said that the songs were fine, they were pretty good, and that alone was enough to be essentially like maybe a little proud and happy. Um, I also, you see this lamp, the lamp that's scattered all around the map in this game, it was done by yours truly. So, yeah, bit of an artist, just a bit. I really enjoyed working on this game. It was a very fun experience. And thank you for everyone watching. Um, we really appreciate that you took time out of your day to be here. Um, we really hope that you enjoy our game and that you enjoy every other game 
that you see here. Um, uh, really, thank you all for being here. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Team Grandma with a Banana. So it's the only game I've ever heard of uh, involving a grandmother and bananas. So congratulations on that. Um, so let them know you appreciate it in the chat. And so the next project we have is uh, Last Man by David Rami. So uh, here we go. Here's uh, David. David Rye, and I'm here to introduce you to my game called The Last Man. So I'm the game developer for the game, came up with the idea, and worked on the game, um, with my group. Um, so, to start it all off, this is the game on itch, but we're going to go to what the idea of the game was, and what it was originally going to be, and how we got to what we have today. So originally, this is a mod. Uh, Miro uh, board where we sort of created the idea of where the game, what the game is, and how it would work with all the mechanics. Um, so originally it was supposed to be a survival horror game, um, multiplayer with two teams, one team with infected, um, an infected team and a team of scientists. The scientist team is supposed to try to survive. All the team that is infected has to try to turn scientists into infected and so it's off with one infected and it grows as more scientists are turned. Um, there's a bunch of different rooms, there was supposed to be a smoke grenade that the scientists were supposed to use against infected and there was generators to turn on and there was a time limit so the scientists had to turn on, work together and turn on the, time, on the generators and leave the, um, the area the entire building before the time ran out, or all of them were turned infected. So, um, originally that was my group's idea. Um, we created a mood board for the feel, and the idea of the game was mostly based off of um, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, because that's where I got the idea from. Um, just like the, the aspect of mechanics and running around um, and being first person, also sort of a multiplayer where you could play with other people and, you know, have fun in this game. Um, so that was the original idea. Um, this is um, what we got started on building at one point, trying to make it a first person game um, with two rooms and, you know, uh, infected scientists. This was the idea of the game. Um, unfortunately, our team granted some complications. Uh, during these times, it's very hard for us to communicate and get in touch with each other and get work done, um, which resulted into some group complications. And um, what ended up happening is we had to scratch that, this entire thing. It ended up being, we we're going to do 2D because like first person was going to work. So um, we tried making 2D, didn't work out. Um, and ended up just being, um, led to just me being the only person in the group doing the project. And, uh, we ended up going to a 3D model of the game. And we had to revamp the entire thing from going from, uh, first person multiplayer scientists and infected, you know, tagging each other and changing each other, um, to a sort of a 2D world where, um, the players where it would be one player and you'd have to run around trying to survive with other player with other enemy AIs trying to tag him and kill him, um, or turn him. Uh, you know, survive the last man, that was the idea. And um, it ended up just being this 3D model where um, uh, it's like a maze and you have to get out and reach the exit and just get out. Um, there's more things that were supposed to be too added to it, um, built into it, but it just didn't work out. And this is what we came up with. Um, uh, so this is a um, developer, and this is what I got to show. Um, 
I'm gonna head you over to the to the guy who did the mechanics, um, and what he did, he's gonna show you the script and stuff. Hi, I'm David. I'm the guy who did the script, and um, this is what I came up with. So I added a. So this is specifically the player movement. It's simple player movement, speed, and input. Um, and the finish line. So we can load up into a scene. Um, these are very important mechanics to make for the game. This is more of an end game thing, just getting out of the maze and, and uh, just completing it. Um, there's that, and there's also the camera controller, which is I wanted to have sort of a 2D look to a 3D game. And that was very important because I didn't want to overcomplicate things and we lost a lot of time. So we went to a 2D view of a 3D game, and this is just the camera following the player. Um, and I specifically changed it to be above it. Uh, where's the camera location? Hold on. Um, it's the camera right here. Uh, it is exactly the position that is right above the player position, so it matches up and just follows it wherever it goes. I also attach the where is it the light to the player so it can just follow it around and so that the light is really focused on the player without having problems of you know moving around um, and losing where the light is when you move across a board because the light's fixed and stationary in one place. Um, I made these walls. I, you had to I had to figure out how to level them in a certain way. To make it, um, you know, so the player can't just like jump over them and make them a little high enough where the player can't jump over them, but low enough just so when the view comes in, really, um, like see and like know where you are. Um, and so this really helped because, um, you know, if you get too close to a wall, uh, it could, if the walls are too high, it could block the player and you can't really see. A lot of where the player is, um, and if the walls are too big, it could overshadow the rest of the area. So this really, um, the height of the walls, figuring that out, and really coming to a specific height that was perfect in between, very important. Um, but yeah, this is what I came up with. Uh, it's a nice height, um, and so yeah, and coming up with the color scheme, uh, I used. Adobe Color, which was very helpful. Um, uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna jump to the actual game on page. Um, this is the actual game. This is what we came up with. We're in the building. Um, it's, uh, it has a 2D look, but it's also sort of 3D. It's made in 3D, um, and it's a pure brick. The last brick, the last man, supposedly, and you have to run around and find the exit to this this maze. Um, there's also supposed to be um, AI bots that were supposed to walk back and forth, and if you would touch them, you'd get a game over. Um, that ended up being coming too complicated, and I wasn't able to edit in in time. Uh, they're supposed to be in every area that's not really filled in that you just run into. That's like makes it more sort of a maze rather than um actually trying to survive. Uh but this is what the games come to. It's a maze game where you have to just get to the end. Um wish there's more mechanics to it, wish there would be more to it. There's definitely more improvements that I'd like to make I would like to include, but given to the time constraints and the um difficulty with really getting the game to where it is now, um, this is this is what I've, this is what we got. Me and uh, the group. Uh, that's about all I got to show. Um, uh, the aesthetic that I chose, well, heading you over to the, um, the art guy in our group, okay? Hi, I'm David. I'm the art guy. Uh, I chose this aesthetic specifically because it just felt right. It gave it 
sort of a light mood, even though it's supposed to be a dark game, just because um, if I was going with the darker colors in this specific setting, it wouldn't really work too well, and it would be a little harder, and maybe a little more frustrating for the player. So making it a lighter colors, like the green, the purple, and the, like the violet, would you say that color is violet, this color right here, it's like a blue violet, so chose this color specifically just so it could um, have a more appealing look, I mean the orange, it's a very pinkish orange background, um, just to have a more appealing look and, you know, give the player the ability to see the area instead of uh, having a darker and gloomy area by yourself being the last man and not really being able to, you know, um, like, see. And this is the aesthetic that I chose and I thought it was a good aesthetic and I think it works. It's also very dumbed down, sort of blocky, blockish, um, because that's what we came up with during the time that was allowed to us. And yeah, this is the game that we made. Um, we didn't really go through a lot of iterations of aesthetic because this is what we got. Um, and yeah, now getting to the end goal, and that's the end of the game. Boom. So, this is my project, The Last Man, with The Last Man, David. Cool. So thank you, uh, David, AKA the last man, um, and his project, the last man. So, uh, it's not easy, um, working on a group project, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of students had to overcome, you know, group dynamic issues and it's always a challenge, always a challenge. So thank you to David, David, and David. All right. So our, uh, final presentation, our final project is, uh, subway skirt, skirt. And uh, that's uh, from Marcus Reed, TJ Lake, and uh, Randy Rodriguez. So let's go ahead and see what they've got. What's up, everybody? My name is TJ Lake, and I am the art and designer of the game that me and my teammates created called Subway Skirt Skirt. <laughs> Um, there are a lot of things that I want to say, but first thing, first, um, let me just say that, um, not only that I'm also the, um, designer of making DM characters and, um, background, um, of the game, I'm also, um, I also made some, some soundtracks for the game that one of my teammates, um, suggested me to use. Um, let me, uh show you what I mean nah. here we go over here this is um beatbox.com um the other um application that I was using to make some sounds really wasn't helping at all because it just didn't sound you know not so it didn't sound too good in my opinion and me and my other teammates were also agreeing on that and also, it just didn't sound what our game would be sounding like. And so, and so one of my teammates suggested me to use this type of, um, like, website that makes sounds and beats, which were truly helpful. And since then, by that day, I already included some, excuse me, excuse me, I included some sounds in. For the game, like background, menu, when you lose or when you win, which I would like to show you right now. Over here, this will be the main theme song of our game, which I will play right now. <laughs> So, as you can see, this was the um, main theme song of our game, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like, you know, like you got the training time, you know, like, just give you, like, amped up, you know, 
and just by the sound of it, like, it's like a, um, 2D type of feel of our game, you know, since, uh, since that is what our game is currently at the moment, and which it will be forever, and here is also the, um, background to our song, which, here's a fun fact, it's also the same version of the main theme song, but, you know, it's a little, like, you know, like, rearranged and such, I would have to show you. You can tell, you know, like, it's a bit more wonky and such. And here, over here, this is what happened when, when you just couldn't catch a train on time. Yeah, that's tough. And over here is what happened when you complete a level, when you reach the train on time, in time, you know? Yep, stand near the closing doors, you know? <laughs> and, um, and also, um, I would like to say, making the characters at first was, um, really difficult to do because I just couldn't, um, like, before using the, um, website that I'm about to show you, in a couple of minutes um let me sh actually show you the version that i'm talking about oh i mean to make this f oh wait no this is the wrong let me show you the actual here over here as you can see over here this was you know like the like very first version of uh player one we currently do not have a name <laughs> For this character but you know he's player one so he's player one no that's his name and once he was in like the unity you know i figured that like he'll just be included like just you know just the um, body of the player one but unfortunately it also included the box which i wish it didn't but you know it happens and that uh, will also include other characters as let me just show you so most of the characters as you see now are no longer in the game because eh, we just didn't want it to have them because they didn't like we just didn't know like what they were really I mean like we knew like we knew what they were gonna do but and eh, we just didn't want them because you know we had some and eh, we had some changes to it that would just make it be better and we just didn't need them like like for example like the hothead which you know yeah it's like as, uh, as i said right here you know if the player hit by the hothead and the player be not that knocked far back f from their direction which you know we already have other things that will you know be like challenging for the player so we might as well we even move this because like, it would have been like too difficult way too difficult for the player this over here, however, the baller, as you can see, we kept him for good measures, because as it also says over here, if the player get hit by one of these purple NPCs, he will give the player some coins and lightning boost. And since then, you know, that would have been a um, helpful way for the players, you know, get some like, you know, get some help and, you know, you know, like I'm trying to um, have some have some boost in the game so that you know it could be a little more you know fair for the player you know not only how like um he can just get a lightning boost to just um you know go, go faster before time runs out and also you know get some coins in you know have enough coins in to um reach um turn tiles like if you have enough then like, you'll be able to um reach some tiles over here is also a character that we unfortunately have to remove because we also didn't know, like, we just didn't want him either because we also made some changes in the handyman, the, uh, these over here, the yellow aura, like, a, um, <laughs> you know, he has, like, you no know, Saiyan aura or whatever, <laughs> and his was, you know, once the handyman, you will drop the metro card that the player can pick up and go to a hidden route station, which uh, we just didn't have enough time to do that. So maybe that was the reason why. Over here is the police officer, you know, 
he will be mostly like the main like villain of our game in a way because he will mostly be chasing your behind like you know like that already so as you as a player you better like reach like run away from this police officer before he even catches you before time runs out and you just don't you know have the title of our game don't get skirt skirt <laughs> And here was also like the very first time, I think it was February, I, I believe, you know, here was, here was the concept of our game, you know, the, you as a player, some other um, items that are in the game, which actually let me show you the items that are currently in the game, which that are still there, and also not, one second. Here we go. Boom. As you see, we have some coins in that you would definitely need to reach some turntile. The bubble gum. Uh, we actually took that out too because yeah, we just didn't have enough time to um, get that in. Lightning. We also had to. Some, it's somewhat still there, but at the time of the recording, you know. We probably won't need it at the end. Skateboard, most, def most definitely we are keeping. In that way that like, um, if the player hops on it, then you know, like, it will also get a on speed boost for a good 15 seconds, I believe. That how, that how much time that the player will be on to reach the train a bit faster. The Metro car also removed, as I said before, about the um, red. Um, NPC, you know, you just just gonna make it in time of the final game, and um, but since then, actually, over the course of months, uh, we would have to change this, you know, obviously because like we just didn't want to have like those type of characters in our game, like just have you know, like. We just couldn't have, like, the boxes of characters inside in the game because that would just be, it just wouldn't be right. It wasn't until, like, a couple of, um, weeks, it dawned on me, like, oh, wow, like, didn't we, like, use this, um, website to, um, make some, like, piss, piss uh, I cannot pronounce it, Pisco characters? And then I realized, wait. You know, like I realize that um, um, we can use this um, like website that can make some like pixelated characters, and thankfully, which I will show you, boom! As you can see, this is player one. The pixelated version, the um baller. the hot hand which is no longer in and the police officer and many other NPCs of the game and I was so glad that I was able to um like like even make these characters like and like like in time because like I knew that we just couldn't use those characters that I made at first at time because like it just wouldn't like make sense of our game to like look like and and as you see over here this is the um train that is also included in our game that once the player reach he will go on to the next level and here were and here are the next level of our game that will be in which it has no like unique you know like um you no know, train tracks and other types of um versions of levels and others, you know, that could um, be a challenge for our players to um, also um, get through. Well, except for the conductor. This over here will just like um, point directions to the player over here to, um, to um, go to um, reach the um, next level. And if he's going, if he's going left or right or up or down 
Hey everyone, my name is Randy, and I am the lead designer behind Subway Skirt Starting this project off, I had several visions as to what I wanted the game to be. However, it didn't take me long to realize how little I knew about planning a game out. Although planning was eventually something I picked up on in this course, there was something else I couldn't wrap my head around, and to this day I still don't. And that is being a designer. What does it mean to design a game? Where can I apply design? How could I use my design to me and my group's advantage? These questions plagued me throughout this entire project, but with small steps, I was able to take my design somewhere good. Initially, me and the group had planned using processing and designing a top-down action game where the level was tiny and had lots of quantity but no quality taking a few steps back we decided to stick with the top-down feature but we also wanted to give the game a little more personality and taste to make the game more than just a race to the finish we first came up with several npcs and the purpose of these npcs would either be either to slow down or boost the progress of the player we narrowed these down to the cop who would slow the player for a few seconds and the baller who would give the player a boost in currency. We wanted to make the currency a feature that would encourage the player to go and search throughout the level a bit more and although it would waste a slight bit of time it would get you out of a nasty ambush from the cops. The level design was a massive deal for me. And I wanted it to feel a bit close to home here in NYC. I chose the boundary of NPCs to give the game a little bit more of a rush hour feel. Something you can only get in the city, complemented with small and concise puzzles for you to get through the population. It was definitely the highlight of my work, and the most complicated part for me. In the end, I could say we actually made a pretty good game going through with this project as its designer threw me for a spin but i wouldn't have preferred any other spot hello my name is marcus reed and i am the lead programmer behind the game subway skirt skirt so here is basically behind the scenes this project was created all in unity or mostly in unity there was also some uh there was also some development in Pascal for like the models, uh, the items, things like that. Here we have the player models, the basically boundary models. <laughs> They're there to stop the player from just having all this open space to move around in. There's the map boundaries, and then there's trains, there's the cop. The cop is the only enemy. They hunt you down, they stop you, so that the you you might arrive too late for your train and you might just miss it. There's turnstiles in the middle of the level to stop all the police uh, from coming after you, so it's only a set amount uh, before or after the turnstiles, as well as other NPCs being unable to escape past it. Uh, cops, there's the purple guy, the special name is the baller, <laughs> there's the items, the nickel, dime, quarter, dollar coin that you can pick up. You need a certain amount of money, a dollar, to get past the turnstiles or else uh, the police are sped up and so they can catch you easier. Uh, here is the code behind much of this. Here is the UI as well as the coin collection, the coin counter, and the timer code. Uh, this is... yeah, as well as uh, scene manager. So like when you start the game, the first scene you see is the uh, subway skirt skirt, start game, uh, settings, things like that. Uh, this manages, you know, when you get to a certain point, it goes to the next scene, whether that be the next level or game over screen, things of that nature. Here is the pretty simple player move script, as well as uh, the script that governs when the player comes into contact with the policeman and they get stopped completely, uh, as well as the policeman disappearing because they have no more reason to stop you, so why would they stick around? 
here is the baller move. Uh, the ballers, they are kind of busy, so they want to, they don't want to be bothered, so they move away from you so that you don't bother them. Uh, once you touch them, you either get a lightning bolt, which speeds up the player a certain amount for a certain amount of time, or you get the dollar coin, which gives you a dollar, which lets you get past the turnstiles immediately. Here is the police move. The police are kind of slow and slidy, uh, but there's enough of them that they still pose a decent challenge to the player. Have them dodge around them, as well as find your way to the, turn to the end of the level, really. Uh, currently the coin time is empty, but that will be full and working by the time this full game is out. Uh, but yeah, currently that's all I have on the uh, programming side, but thank you for listening. Okay, cool. So that was uh, Subway Skirt Skirt. So uh, thank you, Marcus, TJ, and Randy. Um, so yeah, those are our four projects from this semester from Osos Arcade, um, from Game Studio, sorry. Uh, thank you for coming to Osos Arcade. So we actually have, right above us, we have the uh, URL, let's see, which way do I have to go? I don't know, um, where you can find all of these games and you can play the final versions. So uh, please check them out, take a few minutes, uh, tinyurl.com slash Game Studio S21. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, and yeah, if you can just uh, show some appreciation to our students who worked really hard um, in the chat, that would be really, really awesome. So uh, yeah, thank you all and have a great day.